Good morning. May dear beloved we gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we gather as God's family and as church, Christ's body, to celebrate God's love, God's generosity, expresses in the reading today. Jesus who calls us to be his disciples, each and every one of us, he calls us to follow him, to trust him, to complete faith. My friends, before we enter into this sacred mystery, let us prepare ourselves, asking the Lord forgiveness for our sins. I confess that Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what they have done, in what they have felt to do. My fault, my fault, my most serious fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us for the last. Lord of mercy.
Grant, we pray, that we may not be brought into the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. We ask for this our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and
Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand for the proclamation.
to worship the Lord, to give Him thanks for wonderful things He has done in our lives and He continues to do in our, in our lives. God is good. So, my friends, today, well, to, I would say, three beautiful readings, including the song, three beautiful readings, how God's generosity, how we human beings, we human beings too, we are, God created us for goodness. God's created each and every one of you, each and every one of us, for goodness, to express His goodness. But when we look around us, we look at the world, the news, all kind of things, the media, all kind of things, we will say there is nothing good. That's a lie. That's a lie, my friends. We always have goodness. We always have goodness. The world is full of beauty. The world is full of beauty because the, the world was created not by human beings. Yeah? It was not created by human beings. The world, the world was created, was created by God, and everything that God has created is good. There is so much beauty around us, but we need to have an eye of faith to see it. We need to have an eye of faith to see it, and we need to, with our, even with our human eyes, to see it. Eh? To see it. When we look at nature, when we look at everything, we say, "Wow." But. Not that sometimes if we fall into that trap, we will fall into despair. We will be a hopeless people. And that's what the world wants us to, to fall into it. We cannot let the world trap us. Because we need to see. We need to see. We need to ask for the Lord, Lord, open my eyes to see your goodness around me. Your beauty around me. Open my eyes to see you in my brothers and my sisters. Because they too, they too were created in, their, in your own and image and likeness. Eh? In, your, in your image and likeness. So we need to see in each other the goodness of the Lord. We need to see each other the presence of God in, in each other. That's what happened in the first reading today. We just heard. We just heard. We just heard how they expressed their generosity, they extend, extend their generosity to a stranger. And that stranger well, was a God's servant, a God's messenger. And the one after expressing their generosity, we see how God's blessing, how God blesses them, eh? how God blesses them with life, with life. The one who is not able of uh, in, 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 in their age, not able yet to win. Life to to bring our children to this earth, but God bless bless them. God bless them. But God used this man to be his messenger, to be his good news. And we heard what Saint Paul tells us in the in, in the in the reading. Through our baptism, my brothers and sisters, we receive the life of Christ. We become part of the body of Christ. You are, you are part of the body of Christ. You receive the life of Christ. You receive the life of God in you. And we together we participate in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a beautiful reading. And we read that the, the passage more often in funeral. In funeral. It gives us a sense of hope, a sense of hope, a sense of life to revive our hope, to revive our, our faith. To say, there is much beauty, there is much life than we think in our world. In our world. Even the COVID 19, disease, war, hatred, riot, all kinds of things can try to take this away. Take this, take, take our faith, take our uh, willingness to live. But let me tell you, I invite you to turn your eyes, to focus your eyes on the Lord. Who is the good news? Who is the, who give us hope, who give us life, who give us back again to life, 
who tells you you are not the son of darkness, you are not the son of terror, you are not the son of sin, you are a son of light. God created you for freedom, God created you for life, for life. So that's how, that's why we are here, my brothers and sisters. He created you to express His beauty. So today, we began our uh, fully, fully, we could say, summer, summer. We could say our young people, our, our students, they, well, they have a long, 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 long vacation, yes? Long, long vacation. And they are, in summer, they do not even realize they are in summer, in summer. And because it has been a long time being at home, walking at home. Now, at summer, very hot, very hot. In the gospel, Jesus had a way. Jesus has a way, funny way to, of wishing us to be happy, to be happy, to be happy to the gospel, to, to the gospel. And uh, there is a, a passage in, at the end of, he says, know that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And today, what he, what he told his disciples, he tells us today. He tells us today, in the first one, he said, to a man who wanted to follow, who wanted to follow him wherever he went. Jesus replied that no man, no, no, that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And further he said to another who wanted to go to his father, to bury his father, Jesus asked to leave immediately to announce the kingdom. To announce the kingdom. But Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. And he could say, you know, especially some of us, some of us now that with the COVID-19, we have so many family members, fathers, who are, you know, who are dying. But we want to be there. We want to mourn with the rest of the family. But because of the COVID-19, we are not able to be with them. And we take the message of Jesus, this message of Christ to heart. To say, Lord, if this is what you want, but I offer that to you too. I offer that to you. But I offer my family, and this I just start give me courage, give me strength, give me consolation. Be with me, Lord, at this moment of pain, at this moment of testing. Be with me. Be with me. I know your presence will sustain me. But alone, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. As he said, let the dead bury the dead. Jesus does not mean for you just to neglect him, eh? to be, to neglect your family, your loved one. This is not the Lord means by that. And to a third, who simply wants to go and say goodbye to his family, Jesus reminds us, he who looks back after having put his hand to the plow is not worthy of the kingdom of God. He's not worthy of the kingdom of God. Who can follow Jesus under this restricted wall? Eh? You could say in your mind, oh, who could follow? Who could accept this teaching? That's what the disciples, they were complaining. Who could accept this kind of teaching? So, what does that help is that these extremely, my brothers and sisters, this extremely harsh word as simply put in uh, Jesus' mouth, lips. So this harmful, this this harmful of fearsome images and sharp formula is part of the gospel. You cannot tear out the pages. Suppose uh, you want to talk about it again around, you want to call a young people, you want to call our young people. When you are invited, then you say, hey, you know what? I know you, you know, I see in you, uh, priesthood. I see in you, 
religious life. I say you're a sister. You could be a good sister, you could be a good priest. But they're always scared. They say, me? Uh-uh. I have my dream. I have this. But you have it, but you don't know what the Lord has for you. What the Lord has in store for you. Yes, it's hard sometimes to accept the Lord's call. But it is, if it is what the Lord wants for you, my friends, you can fight, fight. But the Lord will give you your freedom. He will give you all your freedom. But at the end, you will say, you know what? I cannot fight with the Lord. I have to follow him. I have to do because once you embrace his call, once you embrace his invitation, that's where, my friends, you will find your true happiness. That's what will make you happy. And nothing else matters. Only when you accept Jesus Christ, when you accept his call with a generous heart, and you surrender yourself to him, and you will see, you will taste the goodness, the sweetness of the Lord. So yes, my friends, you have to understand the message today. You have to understand because it was with phrases like this that we have sometimes deceived your God. This view of God and by making him as a poor God, a perverse God, an inhuman God, demanding the impossible. If it is this one image that comes to mind is that we did not understand because Jesus came to tell us exactly the opposite. Jesus came to tell you the opposite. So how do you understand these words? How to explain the tone of Jesus pronouncing these words. The word of Jesus, neither the church nor anyone has ever interpreted them literally. So we all understand that Jesus does not want to dictate practical style behavior, but we must no longer go to bury his parent. These strong walls are not really common. So the exaggeration is not absent from these all the formula and of these paradoxical sentences. So let us rather turn to Jesus who pronounce these small words in a tone that surprises us. It is the tone of, you may think, their severity. It's even the tone of threat. We no longer recognize Jesus. Where is the question? I think sometimes you may wonder, you may ask yourself, you may ask yourself, where is the Jesus who forgives? Where is the Jesus who forgives? Where is the gardener who waits another year for the fig tree to bear fruits? Where is the owner of the vineyard who hires until the 11th hour? Where is he? It's the same Jesus. It's the same Jesus. Well, there is a priest. There is a priest, a Dominican priest, who help us to understand these confusing pages of the gospel. He wrote about this. All of Jesus' predication is nothing, is nothing, is nothing but good news. It's good news and the promise of happiness, blessedness. Blessed are you. Jesus comes, my friends, to bring us good news, not the bad news, good news. And Jesus continued to bless us, but he encountered a major obstacle. It was not easy for Jesus in his time with his contemporary. So the men of his time were not open to the message did not want to listen to him. Just as, as he encountered the same major obstacle today in our society, in our world. This obstacle is our hardness of heart. Our hardness of heart. In any case, Jesus tried to break down these, these hardness to break the cross of our hearts. In any case, sometimes by being tender, by pronouncing words of sweetness, sometimes by being harsh, by pronouncing 
real world. So, but in all of this, he only aiming at one thing, making a dent in our world hearts. So let us start saying that Jesus is tough. Hardness is in us. Hardness is in me, hardness is in us. In our world today, when we look at around us, when we look at the world, we could not say Jesus is the one that is tough. We could not say that Jesus is the one who is tough. The one who is tough is us. So, my friends, we are part of hearing. We are we are part of hearing. No wonder Jesus raises his voice to to wake up, to wake us up for from our drowsiness. That's what he wants to do. And he told his disciples that was a message he wanted to send to his contemporary. And that the message continues to resonate in our world today. Because in our world today, we can see how you ask yourself, what is going on? What is going on here? When we look at TV, when we look at social media, when we are putting each other down, we are questioning each other. We are questioning each other. Beginning with those who are in power, those who are authority. Instead of using the power, using the authority, using the skills to build the human person, to build our society, to build a better world, to change the world, to trust from the world. To make the world a better place. What they do? They fall into all kinds of morality, all kinds of uh, injustices, all kinds of things. They make our brothers and sisters suffer, suffer from injustices. They let corruption invade their hearts, love of money, love of power, hatred. What kind of things? It's not Jesus who is hard. It is us human beings who is hard. Us human beings. Our heart is closed. Jesus wants to open the heart that is closed with his love. This is the key to open the heart of human person. It is only with the love of God. It is only with the love of God. That is why Jesus called each and every one of us he doesn't call just the priests, doesn't call just the bishops. Jesus calls each and every one of us, all the baptized. This is a sacred calling, this is a holy, holy calling to be the good news. You yourself to transform as a good news of the Lord. We are the good news of the Lord. So wherever we go, my brothers and sisters, we must be that good news. We must be Jesus for others. That is the call. That is what the gospel invites us to do today. That we must commit ourselves. We must not look back. We must, my friends, let Jesus lead us, guide us, teach us, and show us the way. Young people, you must let your, let your heart be open. You must be generous, generous with the, with the Lord, generous, let your heart be open to accept God's calling. All of us who are here this morning, the Lord call, call, is calling you, is calling you. Start judging the Lord, to start saying, the Lord, this is hard, no? The Lord calls you because He believes in, in you, He trusts you. And that is great, that is a great spot for the Lord to trust me, to trust you, to trust us with his message. So let us ask for the Holy Spirit to give us strength and courage to renew our commitment to be disciples, true disciples of the Lord. So we may help our brothers and sisters to come to know the Lord as a gentle, loving, compassionate, and merciful God. 
in so doing, my brothers and sisters, they too may have experienced the love of God in the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends, let us stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God.
Strengthen our city faith, hope, and love that we be thankful and humble as we share the mission of Christ. We ask for this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks, 
He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and it will for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, supper was handed, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the many eternal covenant, which will be brought to you for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection. Until you come again, until you come again. They offer us to celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking of the body and of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. We will the Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Francis, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Monsignor Hennessy. Whom you have called today from this world to yourself, when that he was united with your son in the death of thy face, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, we pray for the souls of the soul of Francois Saint Armand, the cause of the soul of Anthony Dennis. And for the Buddha of Olamachi. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Have mercy on the Celestial family. Have mercy on any transport. You have any name. And it is her family and his family. Have mercy on Natasha, Joseph, please more. That through the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, Saint Helen, who are pleased you throughout the ages, who may marry to be coherent with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, of Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the
quite an odd one.